Hey everyone, Nick here. Get ready. It's a Crispy Carlos 2019 Game of the Year Battle Royale, and I somehow got dragged into refereeing this shit, so let's get started. All right, Carlos, hit us with that number 10. All right, my number 10 is Death Stranding, but it's not the game, but the concepts and ideas that we had of the game before it released. Like, I think Death Stranding was more interesting as a product and as a piece of art when nobody had any real idea of what it was going to be and expectations were all over the place. Like what is this it's so crazy what could this be and that is so much better than what we actually got which in the end was just a video ass game video game with uis and missions and all that lame stuff that really ruined what i thought could be something cool for once all right nailed it crispy all right, <clears throat> my number 10 game going up against that is Apex Legends. And uh, there's a lot that I kind of like about this game. Like, I, I like the, I mean, I, I like the Titanfall universe, which just kind of loosely takes place in. I like the theming of it. I like the gunplay. I like the movement. But I fucking hate this game, actually. It's like, it makes me angry every time I play it. So I'm going to concede the first round to Carlos. He wins. Wow. I did not see that coming. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's, just, it's a fucking dumb game, and I hate it. All right. Number 10 goes to Carlos with Death Stranding. Well, the hypothetical Death Stranding that the, we all... The hypothetical thought. Death Stranding, of course. Yes. My bad. <laughs> all right, Carlos. Tell us your number nine. All right, for my number nine, I have chosen Telling Lies. I was a big fan of her story, and I find that having a game that's kind of similar, but with multiple characters, and with what I think is a more interesting, more complicated story, is just a fantastic game. And also the whole concept of being able to look at five minutes of a person's face, just as, as they're on the like receiving end of a conversation, you know, it's it's a very unique experience that can only be uh, experienced through this fantastic game, Telling Lies. All right. All right, Crispy, what is your number nine? My number nine game, Nick, I have selected uh, is uh, Outer Wilds. And... I think Outer Wilds is probably one of, if not maybe the most unique gameplay experience that we got last year. Um, it's all about piloting your little spaceship around a fully realized uh, physics-driven solar system, and you get to see all kinds of really cool things like black holes and supernovas, time travel -y thingies, and, and all kinds of weird shit. And, um, if, with all due respect to my opponent, I think it's far more interesting than staring at people's faces. <laughs> oh, man. You know, it was a really close one until your closing argument, Crispy. And I think I, I, think I tend to agree with you. <laughs> so I'm going to give number nine to Crispy with Outer Wilds. Yes. I'm sorry, Carlos. Okay, Carlos, tell us your number eight. Right, for my number eight, uh, Mo Astray. It's a game only I played, um, which makes it a very good game. Mo Astray. I liked it a lot, but not enough to buy my own copy because I just mooshed off of Bratz. But it's the like puzzle platforming that 
makes you want to keep playing. Like I'd be at work thinking, man, I want to go home and I'm going to play more Moe's Trade because I want to get to the end. And it's cool, but the plot makes no sense. All right. Cool. Crispy. What do you, what do you have to compete with Moe's Trey? Okay. Uh, my number eight, I selected Super Liminal, which uh, is a first person... Um, I guess you would describe it as being like a perspective puzzle game. Like it's it, all the mechanics are based on the perspective of the camera within the environment and using that to manipulate the size and dimensions of objects. Um, it's really, is that my time? No, sorry. <laughs> it's really, it's my really, bad. Uh, it's really, it's really interesting and cool and can be played like in a single sitting. And I just, I think it's fun, but didn't play Moe's but I heard it was good from Carlos. <laughs> All right, well, this is a tough one, but I'm going to have to give it again to Crispy because Carlos destroyed his own argument when he said he's the only one who played it, but then immediately said he mooched off of Brad. Damn. Wait, so does Brad have it and he never played it? No, Brad played it and talked about it on the podcast, which clearly Carlos doesn't listen to. <laughs> Carlos was disqualified for lying. Correct. Got him. <laughs> oh my god. All right, Carlos. I think you can win this one. What's your number seven? All right, my number seven is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. That's so that's so disrespectful. Man. You know what? That's really disrespectful, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I the only agree. way you can make it up to me is by giving me the win on this one. There's absolutely nothing else you can do. All right, I'll see what I can do. I'm sorry. Keep talking. I'm going to mute my microphone. You should mute yourself. Um, <laughs> well, muting your microphone it's probably the top strategy you should use when playing Modern Warfare Online, but that's something that's been known for probably like 15 years. Modern Warfare. That's it? That's all you got? I really didn't... I, <laughs> <laughs> I hope I didn't ruin what else you had to say about the game. <laughs> well, I guess because... Of the He's insisting that you give him the win regardless. I mean, exactly. there's a good chance I might do that, but let's hear you out anyways, Crispy. What's your number seven? Okay, my number seven is Manifold Garden. It's a real shame that this one got uh, put up against Carlos's Call of Duty argument. Because Manifold Garden is a cool game made by one guy who's obviously got some kind of fucking issues i don't know man this game is weird as fuck it's like i can't even imagine how you program this game like it's it's just so it's so mind-bending the way that like uh you know you, you, you adjust gravity and turn the world in these like tessellated infinite environments and use that to solve puzzles somehow and it's like it breaks my brain every time i try to play it but in a, like a really cool fun way so I think, uh, I hope Chris Davis is showing footage of it right now because I think it's a better game than Call of Duty Modern Warfare, but, but I got to take the L on this one, I guess. I too think this is probably a better game than Call of Duty, but I'm going to have to give the point to Carlos for being a rude asshole. Myself Damn. being a rude asshole. <laughs> Damn. Huh, I'm sorry, Carlos. That's I played, I played Call of Duty though, just to be fair. I did play Call of Duty. It's so good. It's alright. It's so good. Okay, Carlos, what's your number six? I feel this is going to be a legitimate win. Alright, my number six is Brad, because I played him like a goddamn fiddle. I had him capture footage for all these games that I ended up not putting on my list. I'm sorry, Brad. I had no idea it was going to work out the way it did. <laughs> you're you're a real friend. I spoke way too soon. Crispy, can you, do you have anything that can beat Brad? To, to go up against Brad? Yes. Okay, so the game I'm putting at number six to go against Brad is uh, Superland. 
You Which... win. <laughs> That's it? I mean, please continue to talk about it, but <laughs> yes, you win. You don't like Brad that much? You think Brad's that bad of a game? I mean, ironically, Brad's the one who introduced me to this game. That's true. <laughs> Brad introduced me to this game, too, I think. I don't know. Maybe. I'm sorry. Do you have... Um, please continue. It's a fun game. I don't know. It's like you're in a stupid little sand... Everything looks dumb in the game, by the way. I think the design of the game looks bad. I don't like it. Um, but the game itself is fun, really fun, because it's this very, like, tightly compact open world puzzle place. And, and you solve puzzles and you get things and it's fun and I don't know, and shut up! <laughs> I think, I think Brad, like, if I were, if I was in your position, Nick, I would probably give it to Brad just because I like Brad as a person. I mean, Maybe to be honest, I like Superland as a game, but, um, but no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight. I think Superland. When, well, when you say it like that. <laughs> but to be honest, you did insult the way this game looks, which I think is charming as hell. You, you think it's charming? I yeah. Mean, it's like, it's, like the idea is more charming than the execution. I think. It's like, way uh, more charming looking than Brad good, is. Like I don't know what. That's true. That is true. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. That is, a, that is fair. This is a tough one. And to be honest, I have no idea what Chris Davis is going to play when Carlos is talking about Brad. So I'm going to give it to Superland. For no other reason than Superland is a video game. Yes. What are we at? Like three to two? To be honest, I'm going to have to tell you these up at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Carlos, hit us with your number five. I'm going to be honest. I, I, I don't have a number five. There is no number five. You're just skipping number five. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, it's like that, it's like that, uh, it's like that free square in bingo, you know? So you have a number six and you have a number four, but you don't have a number five. Yeah. Okay. I hope, I hope Chris Davis just puts like a black screen. <laughs> right. No, it's 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 a free score. It's like bingo. Let's use this time, this well, minute. How's, or, how's your guys been? Let's oh, I've been I've been good, man. How are you been? Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, I got some I, I got some uh, buffalo chicken pizza from CC's. Nice. And you know how it's got the little chunks of chicken? Yeah. But they they put like all the chicken in like two slices. What? <laughs> yeah. That's fucking it's just... like they just, they they started sprinkling it on top and they just gave up and dumped so it all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I heard you moved into a new apartment recently. How's that? Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty good, dude. Dope. It's dope. That's cool. Nice. Nice. Nicely uh, done. So anyway, my my uh, my number 5 is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is you know, it's been a while since I played it, so I've kind of cooled a little bit since I made this list, but uh it's pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I I think my favorite part was building lightsabers. That was fun. Cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Carlos, what are you doing? What do you mean? Sorry, I was, I'm was. i thinking about lightsabers, but I'm hearing Cheetos. What are those? Flaming Hot Cheetos? Oh, I, I, oh it's because I turned Nomlock off. My text-to-speech broke. Oh no! My my push to text, my push, push to talk. talk. Would you? Are those the regular flaming hot Cheetos or the lime ones? No, the lime ones. Oh yeah, those are good. I can hear the ice clinking around in your in your glass. It's like uh, it's like ASMR or something. Yeah, it's like the it's like the the what you call it the 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 switch controller. Oh yeah. You can hear the ice. <laughs> you can the hear little, the, the ice. <laughs> it's got the little, little speaker in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just so we're clear, number yeah. five is going to be blank versus Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, what, what, yeah, nothing versus <laughs> Jedi Fallen Order. I mean, I feel inclined to choose nothing. I mean, you're the judge, man. I feel like the people would want me to choose nothing. I don't know. I played Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It is a video game. 
It, sure is, a, is. it is a Star Wars video game. And, it sure does. And building lightsabers is cool. And I yeah. think I had more fun playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order than when I'm doing nothing. Well, there you go. So there it goes. I'm going to give it to Crispy with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Well, shit. There it is. There you go. There it is. Okay, Carlos. How are you going to follow up number five? All right. My number four is Slay the Spire. Uh, I can sum up how good Slay the Spire is with one simple statement. I hate card games. I think they're for nerds. I really like Slay the Spire. Damn. That. Carlos doesn't normally do nerd shit. I know. I know. That's very surprising. Uh, this is a very well-written review. Okay, uh, Slay the Spire. Crispy, what is it? Your yeah. what, what made it into your number four slot? Uh, my number four is Dragon Quest Builders 2. It's fun, like Minecraft, but it doesn't look like dog shit. It's got cute little Akira Toriyama designed characters. And you can build like airships and cars later on in the game. And it's f fun. Okay, so we have Dragon Quest Builders 2, which is fun and doesn't look like trash, versus Slay the Spire, which is a card game, and Carlos usually hates card games. Yeah. That sums it up? Yes. Well, I, too, tend to dislike card games. I'm supposed to be impartial, aren't I? Hmm. Yeah. That is tough. I'm going to give it to Slay the Spire. Damn, he's giving it to the Slay the Spire. Yep, number four, Slay the Spire. Okay, we have officially made it into the top three games of 2019. Carlos, start us off. All right. All right, my number three is Love Sam. It is a very unique experience. It is incredibly frightening. Uh... The story is good, and the way through which the story is told is really creative. It might seem simple at first, you know, you're sitting down at a table reading a journal, but then it's like, what is this narrator, you know? Who, who wrote this journal, and why would they write things in them, even telling the truth? And then the way reality around you starts to change. The game is really good. It has like one or two frustrating gameplay segments, but I was so compelled to finish the game and get to the end of the story that it they did not seem like frustrating to me at the time. All right, love Sam at number three for Carlos. Crispy, what do you have to compete with that? Okay, my number three is Slay the Spire. And you know what? Carlos plays this game. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Wow, okay. So now we have a dilemma. Because I gave Slay the Spire... Well, no, we don't necessarily, because, you know what? Love Sam. Love Sam. Well, it's Slay the Spire, Nick. Slay the Spire deserves to be on this list twice. Can we do that? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I feel, looking, looking back at the lists we have so far, I feel like, why the hell not? You're not, you're not deciding what game won. You're deciding whether me or Crispy won. So... Carlos, your argument when you talked about Slay the Spire was that you play it. And C Crispy's argument talking about it now is that you play it. What was that Carlos plays it? That Carlos plays it. And Carlos is a, is a paragon of taste. You're right. You're right. He is right. He is right. All right, fuck it. Slay the Spire goes on there twice. <laughs> it's so good, though. Yeah, it's, so good. it's a good game. This is so ridiculous. All right. Number two. Carlos, what's your second favorite game of 2019? My number two is Outer Wilds. Oh. You know, after... It's kind of a weird comparison to you make it, but I'm sure I've seen some other people make it before. But after Return of the Oberdin, I was like, what else can fill this void? You know, this is an experience that you only get to have once. But thankfully, Outer Wilds came out 
because it kind of fulfilled the same kind of itch. And you would have thought, you would think that, hey man, this game, you know, with not a lot of hand holding or guidance, might get a little confusing with all the elements that are, you know, going on. But the journal and rumor tools that you have at your disposal just elevate this game to the next level. That's that's a really 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 good choice, Carlos. Crispy, what do you have that could possibly beat Outer Wilds for the number two spot? Mm, my number two is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Because, I mean, come on, did you fucking play it? No. You didn't play this game, Nick? No, I bought the Switch version. Oh, you're such a bitch. I hate you. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's everything that's cool about Egovanius. It's great. It's fucking great. I mean, Carlos played this game too, so if that tells you anything. It's really fun. I think uh, I think that the Crystal Shard system, uh, like the, the, it's basically like a revive of the soul system from the Aria of Sorrow and Dawn of Sorrow Castlevania games, um, is so fucking dope. Every enemy can uh, spawn a crystal that you can absorb and then you get their powers. Uh, there's all kinds of crazy characters, all kinds of crazy weapons. You can fucking break the shit out of this game, which was what was really cool about stuff like Symphony of the Night. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. If you look at this game and you're like, I don't know, then, then you're just dumb because this game's great. All right. Really poignant, well-made argument. And I think I'm going to give it to Bloodstain because we actually picked Outer, <laughs> Outer Wilds in the number nine slot. <laughs> but you know what? Oh, You're right. Now, now I, this list's integrity is important. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Bloodstain is, is... You're right. Bloodstain's a great game. I wish I had played more of it. I wish I didn't buy the Switch version. Fucking great game. I really wish. It may have changed my own top ten if I had actually played it. Who knows? The, so stupid. The world may never know. Okay. I'm almost afraid to ask. Carlos, what's your number one game of 2019? My number one game of... 2019 is Days Gone. I hate you. you I, see, fucking, I hate you so much. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> it's in. See, 2019, I got married to the love of my life. And the very last game I played as a single man was Days Gone. One night before a wedding ceremony, uh, I went back home by myself. My now wife went not to stay with her mom. And I picked up some chips at the convenience store. And I stopped by the red box and grabbed a copy of Days Gone, got home, played it for about 20 minutes, and fell asleep. But what I did get from those 20 minutes is that I want to be the kind of husband that uh, Deacon St. John is to Boozer. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> You son of a bitch. <laughs> this is all an elaborate ploy just to get to this moment in time. This, this whole thing. Crispy, what's your number one? Uh, my number one is Boozer from Dick. No, I'm joking. Uh, it, my number one is Disco Elysium. You win. You win. <laughs> really? Really? Yes. You're not going to give it to Days Gone. I'm not going to let Days Gone limp into our group year in review top 10 because of Carlos's pity vote. Tell really? us about Disco Elysium. <laughs> really, Nick? <laughs> okay. Days Disco gone. Two-time four-player game of the year <laughs> awardee. Uh, Disco Elysium is, is, is obviously a much better game than Days Gone. I mean, oh, you can't. Don't do this clear. to me, Crispy. Clearly a much better game than Days Gone. It has it has like actual artistry behind it. I fucking hate you. <laughs> it has actual actual like artistic intent and talent uh, <laughs> that went into it. Um, it's all about it's all about an exploration of oneself and identity and what it means to 
be a person? Is is your is your identity intrinsically tied to who you are? Is your memory intrinsically tied to your identity? Like, if you have neither, are you even still a person? Kind of thing. Um, and like, I don't know what Days Gone's about. It kind of looks like bikers shooting zombies, which I mean, whoa, <laughs> you know? So. I think Disco Elysium deserves to win. I feel like I should abstain from picking a winner <laughs> in this category. I truly do. You can't abstain. You got to pick one. Oh, shit. Uh. Well, you know, so I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Crispy the win for Disco Elysium because at least he played. Damn. His so you admit that you don't like Days Gone. The the difference is you played your game. <laughs> Car- Carlos didn't play his game. <laughs> there you have it. Oh my god. I, don't, I, fucking win. I cannot wait to see how Chris Davis handles this video. <laughs> Alright. There you have it. Crispy and Carlos's top 10 games of 2019. Well, well, well fought, Carlos. Thank you. Uh, do I have to pick and, like an overall thank you, winner? Nick. <laughs> thank you, Nick, for being such a gracious host. You're welcome. I feel like this was all a ploy to get me to sit, to agree to doing this whole referee thing just so we could get to the number one. <laughs> I feel like I've been punked. Uh, well, I mean, who knows, right? I who think, knows? Uh... The world may never know. I hope the people enjoy it. But hey. You know what? Despite the, despite the jokes, there are some damn fine video games on these lists. Damn fine. Especially Carlos's number five. Which was nothing. Yeah. It's that's empty. A great one. It's an that's empty. That's like that's my favorite. Sometimes doing nothing is just the best. But anyways, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your your well thought out, beautifully argued top ten lists. I can't wait to see what y'all come up with next year. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Alright. Well, there you have it. It's never a dull moment with these two. I don't know what any of this actually means, especially in regards to our 2019 year in review, but I think it goes without saying that if the game was mentioned in this video, it's probably worth playing. Especially Days Gone. Definitely play Days Gone. Anyways, that's a wrap on 2019. We'll see you next year for another year of podcasting. Cheers.